Hi, my name is Nairi. Is Christmas a time that you enjoy? How do you get on with your children around Christmas? This is a channel around adoption, fostering and childhood trauma, so often Christmas has its challenges. So let's think about the positive, shall we? Most of us have some sort of enjoyment from Christmas. It may be that we didn't necessarily have good childhood Christmases, but most of us get some sort of enjoyment from it. Um, it could be that we enjoy the food. It could be that we enjoy spending time with our family a little bit more and having those quality moments and time meeting family that we don't normally meet with generally speaking it's a fun happy time it's a happy celebration but what is it that the children enjoy about Christmas I suppose that's what I want to get to now our sons have mixed emotions around Christmas I would say first and foremost they love routine and Christmas is completely out of routine we see people that we don't normally see for longer periods of time there's lots of busyness there are lots of presents there is lots of food and whilst that is a positive thing I think sometimes for them because it's out of routine it can be a challenge for them and of course they get really tired so let me know in the comments if you find that Christmas is actually very challenging or quite challenging even if you do enjoy it let me know in the comments if you have the same issue so uh for the younger one particularly he finds it very difficult not knowing what is going to happen so a little tip a little bit of advice especially if you've got younger children our boys are now teenagers now but what you could do is have a little book that you make together and sort of tick off the days as you get closer to Christmas but also within the book you're going to clearly outline what you anticipate will happen over the two days or three days or however long your Christmas celebrations last for ours are mainly two full days so kind of have a little bit of an idea some pictures photographs of people that might be coming just a little booklet that you make with your child that's an idea ours are too old for that now and they have a bit more of an idea what's going to happen but I will guarantee that they will both ask a lot of questions before the time so my son and his wife are coming over the Christmas period and they adore my son and they they adore his wife as well so that's not an issue uh, but there'll be lots of questions around you know what room they're going to be in how long they're going to be here for and there'll be questions around the traditions that we've made around Christmas and whether they're going to happen so that's what's important to my boys are we going to repeat what we've repeated since the ages when they were two and three when they first came to be with us and even to the extent of sometimes still putting out Christmas stuff for Santa Claus coming which I think I stopped last year or the year before and they're in their teens because not because they obviously they know that Santa Claus doesn't exist don't let your children watch this video they know that but it's part of the routine that we built up for Christmas and this year we are doing things differently I'm not wrapping the individual presents they're going in a sack they're not going to be individually wrapped and because of that we're not putting the sack or the big you know group of presents in their room so that's a change and they will really struggle with that even though they you know they are mid-teens now so sometimes with the boys because we've created traditions around Christmas if if there isn't a change of that they really struggle with that because they love that routine the another thing that they actually really struggle with is too many surprises now I don't know about you I'm not a great lover of surprises if my husband says to me oh I've got you know a really good surprise for you I'll be anxious rather than excited so some people love to be surprised don't they I'm not one of them and I do believe actually the boys don't really enjoy it they like actually to know what their presents are going to be now sometimes we make sure that they do know what the main present is going to be so that we don't have any upset around that what happens though often is the smaller presents get opened in a flurry of excitement or rush just to get to the thing that they know they're going to get so sometimes the whole present thing can be quite an anxiety driven situation I don't think we do spoil the boys compared to what I see other children getting but they do get a few presents on the morning and then they'll get a main present and so kind of for them not knowing what those extra presents are going to be it's almost like they want to open things really quickly or want to get to them really quickly because they don't like not knowing they don't like not knowing what's going to happen next 
The busyness of Christmas is a big factor in a lot of anxiety around our boys because they get really tired. And all I can say is, if you can manage to find some time when your children can have that downtime on their own. When our children were younger, this is my birth children, so it's a bit different. We used to spend a lot of time going to see relatives and things, and we didn't actually have ever have Christmas on our own at home. That was something that was a tradition, and so therefore, to a certain extent, my children enjoyed it but what we couldn't do was have any downtime and uh, it didn't matter so much to my children back then but for our boys now that downtime when they can just go to their room have a look at what they've got they can enjoy that main present particularly and have time to enjoy it is really important for them and when they don't get it I feel like we're on a bit of a treadmill for the next thing to happen the next thing to happen and I can feel the anxiety building particularly with the younger one and I can feel that at some point there's going to be a meltdown generally speaking in our house the meltdown happens day two we get through day one with all the presents we get to day two when often we have additional family coming or we're going somewhere and particularly him he cannot hold it together day two because he's tired but also because there's not going to be so many presents and because he hasn't had that alone calm downtime I've noticed with both the boys, they like to be alone in a house where we are. So they don't like to be alone alone. They don't enjoy it when we're not in the house, not that that happens very often. They like to know where we are, what we're doing for that security blanket, but they like time on their own. And yes, that could be because they enjoy gaming, but I've noticed that they just need that downtime sometimes and obviously over Christmas that doesn't happen very often and I think it's important that we provide it for our children because childhood trauma creates so many issues and problems around being overcrowded and having to interact with people trying to make conversation they find difficult so do I sometimes you might think not looking at me on here but sometimes I do sometimes we don't want to be chatting all the time sometimes we need it to be quiet and I think it's going to be so important for them to be able to have that so this year it's a little different because it's my mum's 80th birthday so the second day which is our boxing day we're going to go out for a meal now I anticipate that to be really difficult and so I'll be thinking ahead about that before it happens and having conversations with the boys about this is how long the meal's going to be. This is what the meal is. Don't worry if you can't eat it all. You know, I expect you to sit at the table and have the meal. But then afterward, when we go to someone's house, I don't mind if you do X, Y, Z. I don't mind if you take that downtime. I don't mind if you don't get so involved with the family at that point. Just be there for the meal and interact at the meal and then beyond that it's okay so I'm going to make sure that they understand that and going to try to explain to them how long it's going to be before we get to the hotel where the meal is and try to explain to them what the setup is going to be like as best I possibly can when I've not been there before so in your situation think about the what should I say the times when it's going to be really difficult for the children they may be the times that you enjoy the most I love it when people just call at the door unexpectedly and come in and say happy Christmas, come in with some flowers or come in with you know a bottle of something and sit down for a little while and it wasn't it wasn't expected. It's a nice surprise. Maybe it will be one of my children that wasn't due to come that day and they've managed to fit us in. That would be difficult for my boys. So what I might enjoy might be what they don't enjoy. And this is the juxtaposition big word there isn't it between what adults need and what children need you cannot always focus on your children I've said this in my videos many times because your own self-care has to happen and if it doesn't happen you can't be there for your children so it can't always be about what they need but it's great to anticipate those really difficult times that are going to happen so what happens in your family that might cause your children problems is it when they're going to be required to sit and eat for a longer amount of time or that the stuff you're going to present to them is not their everyday food it's going to be a problem are they going to overeat are they going to try to undereat? is it going to be when great uncle you know whatever he's called appears and they've never met him before and he has an appearance that makes them feel just triggered or uncomfortable 
what is it going to be that you think you anticipate your children are going to struggle with and if your adoption say is fairly new or your foster child is fairly new how can you make that easier for them this little book could well make it easier for them just chatting to them might make it easier for them asking them what they're worried about and actually finding out for them what they struggle with might make it easier for them but in my experience often children won't share that easily so it could be that you use some try to remember to link them below for you uh, for an amazon link if i remember so that you can get the emotions out because we anticipate good times for our children we want good times for our children and there's nothing more amazing than having a newly adopted child or newly fostered child that is enjoying the process of opening their presence the joy the thrill of new and different things happening for perhaps a holiday season that they've never had before amazing however However, it's really important that we understand that it's not all going to be positive. It's okay if it's not all positive because if you put too much pressure on Christmas and everything going well, I can guarantee you, you'll be upset because you'll feel let down when something you planned didn't go off. Sometimes even the presents that you planned, even the presents that they asked for as a main present, they don't seem to get the joy out of it and you can't really explain why that is but you just have to accept that their ways are not your ways and their understanding of things is not your understanding of things but it's nothing that you are doing wrong all you can do is ease your way into the holiday period try to enjoy it as much as you can try to find calm spaces for the children there's a video which i'll try to remember to link about calm spaces in the home but this is more calm spaces around christmas and just try to think it through beforehand don't just go launching yourself into it without any preparation around those times that might be difficult for them i hope that helps you if i don't produce another video which i'm pretty sure i will but have a happy christmas anyway and i will see you on fly little birds thank you